Sanitation and good hygiene have become such a significant part of our daily lives that we don't realize how revolutionary the germ theory was. The revolution of the germ theory caused major reform in sanitation and medical practices despite the adverse initial reactions towards it. Louis Pasteur and Joseph Lister brought up this revolution with the creation and implementation of the germ theory. At first, the germ theory was not widely accepted, but once it was, the medical industry was completely remade and reshaped. From the time of the Middle Ages until the late 19th century, spontaneous generation was believed to be the cause of disease. Spontaneous generation was a theory that proposed living matter sporadically appeared from non-living substances. In the 17th century, a common belief asserted that leaving sweaty underwear and husks of wheat in an open-mouthed jar would generate mice about 21 days later. It was also believed that leaving raw meat in a pan for several weeks would generate maggots. Prior to Louis Pasteur, a French microbiologist, people had tried to disprove spontaneous generation, but their efforts proved futile until Pasteur's experiments in 1859. Pasteur brought up a revolution with the creation of the germ theory, which he demonstrated in his 1859 experiments. During these experiments, he broiled two broths to sterilize them. He then placed one broth in an open mouth container and another in a swan neck bottle. The swan neck bottle captured dust and other particles in the air, not allowing them to reach the broth. Over time, the first broth became cloudy, but the one in the swan neck bottle was still clear, proving that nothing can spontaneously generate. This would later become the basis of the germ theory. After disproving spontaneous generation, Pasteur set out to use science to help people. At the time, cholera in chickens was a big problem for farmers as it spread rampant and would kill many chickens. Pasteur found that chickens who were injected with a small culture of cholera and lived would not die or even get sick when they were once again injected with the same culture. This gave rise to the first ideas of vaccination. Pasteur used these same ideas to prevent anthrax in sheep. In 1882, Pasteur ran a public experiment to prove his idea of vaccination and on May 5, 1882, Pasteur announced that 25 control sheep who were not vaccinated were dead and that all 25 vaccinated sheep were alive. Pasteur's greatest success in vaccination was with hydrophobia, also known as rabies. After painstaking work, Pasteur found the germ that is responsible for hydrophobia. Pasteur used the same idea that germs cause disease and discovered that injecting a dog with a weak hydrophobia virus would allow it to live longer when given a stronger hydrophobia virus. Pasteur stated, The dog upon which I had experimented proved completely insusceptible to hydrophobia. When asked about vaccinations for humans, he said that many more years of research would be necessary. Although the germ theory has a revolutionary nature and seems important to us, its initial response was very unfavorable. Not many were willing to concede to the germ theory because it was so contradictory to the most widely accepted theory, spontaneous generation. Some people couldn't accept the idea of germs, some people were persuaded by a religion, and some just believed the germ theory was completely false. Two men, Samuel Solomon and Harry B. Bradford, were against the vaccination that sprung up from the discoveries of the germ theory. They argued that vaccination was actually detrimental to our health rather than good for it. Vaccination is impotent and the most harmful and disease-breeding operation performed today. They backed up their claims with a comparison of death rates in Berlin, where vaccination was compulsory, and London, where vaccination wasn't compulsory. Berlin had the higher death rates. They even went as far as saying that doctors who vaccinate should be held responsible if their patient contracts any diseases. But despite its rather slow start, the germ theory inched its way into modern science and eventually turned it inside out. The New York Times expressed this by saying, while at the outset of people were unwilling to admit the role played by microbes in the production of disease, today it is familiar to the layman. The germ theory of disease has gained such favor that it has even been questioned whether all diseases are not caused by microbes. But even today, there are still people who oppose to the theory, like Meg Welsh Stendler, who deduces, Germs had no power to make me sick. 
God had never made germs or disease. Although Pasteur thought of the germ theory and used it to create vaccinations, Joseph Lister was the first one to implement such ideas to a hospital. While working at the University of Glasgow, Lister noticed that the newborn mortality rate was higher among physicians than midwives. He wondered why this happened, despite the physician's superior experience. He noted that the biggest difference was that midwives washed their hands between births and physicians typically did not. Lister linked this to Pasteur's germ theory, which he had read about and decided that hygiene should be implemented in hospitals. He called for a complete reform in his 1867 work, Antiseptic Principle of the Practice of Surgery. He called for the use of carbolic acid to disinfect instruments as well as the cleaning of hands between operations. He also claims a solution of carbolic acid in 20 parts of water while a mild and cleanly application may be relied on for destroying any septic germs that may fall upon the wound during the performance of an operation. The hospitals as hygienic, sanitized places as we know them today. Overall, his advanced ideas of hygiene and sanitation in hospitals, as well as the use of antiseptics to kill germs and prevent disease, were revolutionary. His implementations of the germ theory helped kick off the modern age of medicine. Other reforms that took place because of the germ theory happened in military hospitals. The Spanish-American War in 1898 was the first major war after the acceptance of the germ theory. Typhoid was a major problem during the war and doctors knew that it would spread if there was poor sanitation and fecal contamination. Doctors took the lead on implementing sanitation and hygiene and used many of Lister's ideas in their military hospitals. They used antiseptics on the battlefield as well as during operations to save limbs and lives. Because of such practices, the Spanish-American War had the lowest rate of wounded soldiers thus far. In the following years, the military embraced the germ theory and hygiene even more, establishing the Department of Military Hygiene in 1905, which would eventually provide standard typhoid immunization for soldiers. Pasteur's experiments and Lister's implementation of sanitation and hygiene launched a new era of medicine that is still viable today. Pasteur's germ theory of disease is now the backbone of medicine and vaccination. The 21st century hospitals still take big hints from Lister's groundbreaking reform. In 2006, the FDA used Lister's ideas from the 19th century to establish standard pasteurization procedures for milk. The germ theory is now so widely accepted that the 18th century beliefs of germs and other organisms spontaneously generating seem primitive and laughable. The germ theory is even regarded as so revolutionary that some have described it as perhaps the single most important contribution of any modern scientific discipline. The germ theory has one central idea that one microorganism causes one disease in everybody. Now today this seems so obvious, but this is one of the most revolutionary concepts in medicine. The germ theory was an unorthodox idea that, while it was looked down upon at first, has now changed our ideas of medicine and have greatly improved our understanding of the world.